Welcome to the first video of this very short series about global exception handling in Blazor and ASP.NET Core. I will be using .NET 6 and with it the newly introduced error boundary component. If you want to watch a video over how it works, Gavi Lange Free, I hope I spelled his name correctly, has a great video about it. It is linked in the description. To show you how Blazor deals with unhandled exception previous to .NET 6, I'm modifying the increment count method. And with previous to .NET 6, I mean how Blazor deals with unhandled exception if you are not using the error boundary component. I click the button, I see the message pops up. We could style the appearance of the whole alert and the message, but we can't change its function and also the exception is getting logged to the console. Now if I click the link here, the whole application is getting reloaded and this is not the best experience for the customer. Because I want to make global exception handling work, I'm navigating here into the main layout um, component. Now it inherits from layout component base, that's why it has a property uh, with the name body, which represents the whole application itself. Now I'm going to enclose it uh, in the error boundary component. The error boundary component is a templated component, which means it takes render fragments as parameters. It takes two of them. The first render fragment or one of the two uh, render fragments that it takes as parameters is named child content. It is getting rendered whenever there is no um, yeah, unhandled exception and the second render fragment is called error content and it is getting rendered whenever there has been an unhandled uh, exception now the type of error content is render fragment of t so the generic version and in this case t is of type exception so what can i do if i want to display exception specific ui or markup I can say context, that's just a Blazor naming convention, and then here, and yeah, it's of type uh, exception, and I see all the, the mem members uh, of an exception. I can also change this name by specifying that I want to name it as exception, and now in here, yeah, I can work with the exception. So I'm using Bootstrap for the styling, just a little alert. And then I also print out the message. Now, of course, um, you have to ask yourself, uh, do you really want to show this to the user? Uh, I see some applications, they have nice icons when an exception happened. Um, yes. So let's have a look. Now, if I click the button, I see the, how did I call it? Yeah, the error content is getting rendered with the exception and the message, but there's no real way to reset the whole thing. So to make this happen, I have to create a code block. I'm adding a private field, call it error boundary. And then in the initialize method, I'm initializing it. Now I'm using the addref directive here to pass a reference to the error boundary component. And this now allows me to call methods that are defined uh, in the error boundary component yeah, from this object here, because it holds a reference to the error boundary component. And to call the method, I'm adding a button, call it clear. Again, I'll study with bootstrap. And whenever we click the button, I am calling the recover method on the error boundary object. 
Now I here have the option to click clear and I see it goes away. If I open the developer tools again, I see here in the console it still locks the whole exception. Now if I'm developing, I, this is for me the wanted behavior because I want to inspect where the exception has happened. If you deploy to production, maybe you don't want to necessarily show it to the users. It's not that much about security, but also yeah, just a bit of the appearance. Of course, most of the users don't have the developer tools open, but still. So there's a way how we can achieve that. I'm creating a new clause or first I'm creating a new folder. I call it exception handling. And in here I'm adding a new clause. I call it custom error boundary. This clause is going to inherit from error boundary. I have to import a namespace for it. Now the whole idea of this clause is to yeah, I'll configure the way uh, the console or exceptions are getting locked to the console. So I'm overriding the on error async method. Now somehow I want to retrieve the current uh, environment. So are we in production or are we in development? So therefore I'm using property injection. I have to import the namespace here too to use attribute. And the WebAssembly host environment is going to tell me yeah, if you are in what environment uh, we are currently. And then here I can make a check if you are in development. I'm going to call the base implementation of the on error async method, which will log everything to the console. And if you are in staging or production, I don't want to, anything to be locked to the console. And to make this work now, of course, this is just uh, personal preferences. Uh, and if to make this whole, the whole thing work, I have just to Um, yeah, I'm just going to quickly import the namespace. And then here, the same thing. Again, some messed up naming. Okay, now it should all work. So I hope I could have shown you how we can handle our exceptions uh, globally in Blazor. The main thing lays here in main layout where the custom array boundary component that got introduced in .NET 6 uh, takes two um, render fragments as parameters. The first one is child content and the second one is getting rendered whenever there has been an unhandled exception to reset the UI, I am using the add ref here so that I can call the recover method. And because I only want to see the exception getting locked to the console in the development mode, I am here overriding the error boundary base clause. Thank you very much for your attention.